Dahl. I'm a certified personal trainer and a strength and conditioning coach here in Hudson, Massachusetts. Welcome back to the Fitness Forum. If you haven't seen the Fitness Forum before, this show is an opportunity for you to learn about some aspect of fitness. I'm here to educate you, the viewer, to things that you could do at home for your own fitness or things that you could learn here and then take to the gym for your own workout. So welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to talk about building better balance and it's something that my clients ask me about all the time. Now I have a very wide variety of clients. I have some elderly clients who have orthopedic issues. I have some middle-aged clients that are hitting their 50s and 60s and, and really dealing with the changes that occur with aging. But I also have a lot of young athletes that I train. And whether you're a young athlete or a senior dealing with orthopedic issues, balance is very, very important. Now balance is really a combination of skills. Most people when they ask me about balance, think that it has something to do with their ankles or their feet. And it does, but that's just a really small part of it. Often people will share with me they think that their ankles are weak or for some reason their ankles are tight. While that's important information, there are many more things going on when we attempt to balance. So again, whether you're a young athlete or an older person, I'm going to give you some tips today, really easy ones to start working on your balance. So first of all, let me just talk a little bit about what balance is. Balance does have something to do with your feet and your ankles, but balance really is a component of many different things. First of all, you do have your awareness in your feet. When you're standing and trying to balance or you're stepping over a puddle or you're climbing on a rock, there are signals that are sent through the bottom of your foot through what's called proprioceptors. And these little bodies, Golgi bodies, whatever they're called, they're in the tendons and they give us feedback about where our foot is placed. Now as we get older, some of these Golgi bodies, or Golgi tendons as they're called, are aging as well. So we sometimes lose good feedback from our feet to tell our body how to reposition itself to catch balance. So number one, remember that it does have to do with your feet on the ground. Now, if you wear high heels all the time, or you wear shoe, shoes that keep you very far off the ground, you're losing proprioception. So one thing I always tell my clients is that when you're gonna practice your balance, you should always try first barefoot. Now that's gonna be challenging for some of you, but try barefoot. Uh, one of the big hot rages that are out right now, if you want to call it that, is the minimalist shoe. And the minimalist shoe keeps as much of your foot on ground contact as possible. So I wear minimalist shoes, um, not necessarily when I run, but for all of my other activities. So there is a lot to be said for barefoot balance training and even barefoot training. So there are other things which come into play with balance. Number one, your eyes. So your eyes give you feedback all the time about where your body is positioned in space. Most of us um, have plenty of good vision to assist us with balance, but if you do have poor vision, that's gonna impact your balance. And we know that because when you try to balance with your eyes closed, it's a challenge. Um, the third thing is we do have our inner ear, our vestibular system which assists us with balance. So if you're the kind of person who gets dizzy easy, has problems with your inner ear, that's gonna be a big problem for balance. Now, we might not be able to help with your inner ear or your vision, but we certainly can help with your proprioception. And we can certainly help with the signals that get transmitted from your feet up to the rest of your body. So here's the important take home for today. Your balance is not just about your feet, or your eyes or your ears, it's about your core. And the stronger you are, and the stronger your core, the better your balance is gonna be. So one of the first things I suggest when people ask me about balance and how to train balance is train your core. I'm gonna start on the floor showing you three or four very simple exercises to train your core, and that's gonna help your balance. Then we'll come back up and actually practice balancing, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So 
Let me just define core because I think some people might have a misconception about what your core is. Your core isn't just your abs. Your core muscles are all of the muscles that attach to and stabilize the spine. Your glutes, your low back, your upper back, your anterior core is all of your abdominal muscles and your hip muscles. They all need to hold your spine and particularly your, your pelvis in good alignment. And that's your center of gravity. So when your core isn't strong, your center of gravity is not held where it should be and you're much more likely to lose your balance. So keep in mind that the stronger your core, the better your balance. So I'm gonna start with the most basic of exercises. If you're an older person and you have challenges with balance, this is where you want to begin. If you're more uh, advanced fitness level, you may want to skip this part and try some of the other things I'm going to show you later. But no matter what, remember your core needs to be strong. So I'm going to start down onto the ground. Um, one of the best exercises for engaging your core for balance is called bird dog. Now bird dog is an all fours exercise. So in this we're balancing on four points, right? When we stand it's only two. So this is something many of you have seen before and I'm going to come down on the ground. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my hands are directly under my shoulders and my knees are directly underneath my hips. My head is going to stay in neutral and then slowly I'm going to lift one arm in the opposite leg. And what I might do is just briefly hold it, okay? So it's very brief. You might wanna do five times per side, 10 times total. But what I am really focusing on here is that my lumbar spine, my low back is very, very still. So I'm gonna do it again and I want you to watch. In the old days, we would really concentrate on either lifting the leg really high or lifting the arm really high. It's not about the arm and leg. Those are merely the stressors on your lumbar spine. It's about what your back is doing. So here, if I had very bad balance and a weak core, as I lifted, I might shake all over the place. If that happens to you, just take your time. Or I might arch through my back. When the core is strong, both here and here, now I can be very focused. I'm not lifting my leg very high. And I'm not shifting my body right to left either. I'm staying very, very centered with this. I even like to pull my abs in just a touch, okay, because that helps me stabilize my spine. Sometimes it helps if I describe to my clients that they have a glass of um, water on their back or a cup of coffee. Think about not spilling that. So that's a really, really simple exercise. Um, now I'm going to go down onto my back and do some hip work and some glute work. Now. For some of you, you may not be able to get down onto the floor, okay? If you can't get down onto the floor, you can do this on your bed, all right? Now, of course, your bed will be a lot mushier than the floor, which is gonna make it harder, but feel free to just go on your bed and do these exercises. So aside from working the lumbar spine, some of the deep core muscles and the anterior core, your hips have an awful lot to do with your balance, and we'll talk about that more when I stand up. But one of my favorite exercises is just a really simple side leg lift. So I'm going to lay down onto the floor. This is a great one to do in bed. Um, if you don't like to get on the floor, you just do it right in bed. So I'm going to take my top leg and flex the foot, okay? There is strength right here through my hip. Bottom leg is bent. With this arm nice and comfortable, I'm just gonna lift my leg up and down. So what I'm doing here is I am isolating the hip abductor muscles. These muscles move my leg away from my body, as you can see, but these muscles are integral to balance. When these muscles are strong, you have a much better likelihood of being able to balance on this leg. So you can see all I'm doing is lifting le the leg straight up and down. I'm not lifting way high. That's not working the proper muscles. You want to keep your foot forward and just lift up like this. Okay? So again, maybe you might do 10 on each side. Um, when you're first starting out, 
try two sets of these, see how you feel. You do want to work up to three sets. So three sets of the bird dog, three sets of the hip abduction um, side leg raise. And of course, you also want to do the other side. Now, when it comes to balance, as I mentioned, your abs and your glutes are very integral as well. So a supine glute bridge is a fabulous way to get your glutes engaged in your posture and in your balance. So I'm gonna lay onto the floor. <clears throat> so these are very simple exercises um, and you've seen them before. What they also can do is be great rehabilitation tools for a back injury. So lots of times we hurt our back because it's not held stable by the core and you reach and you rip a muscle. So these exercises I'm showing you now are wonderful for back rehab. Now this is called a supine bridge and you can see I'm extending my hips up into the air, hands on the ground. I'm pressing through my heels for the most part because when you press through your heels, you engage your glutes much more than when you press through your toes. Okay, so I'm taking through my heels, feet are a little wider than your hips, and you're squeezing up. Okay, so you might wanna do eight to 10 of these, and I even like to do like a three second hold up at the top of the exercise. Okay, so that's called a supine bridge. The glutes are really big muscles, and we tend to get very tight through the front of the body, so we need the back of the body to compensate for that tightness. Now, one of the main things we really need to do is have good posture. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't have good posture, the likelihood of having bad balance is pretty high. So remember, everything is about proper posture. So that's a glute bridge, a supine bridge, which means stomach up. One of the more challenging exercises, <clears throat> which you can try, is something called a side bridge or a side plank. Now, if you're a new exerciser, there's two different variations of this. The simplest version is where we're gonna do it on our knees. So your elbow is directly underneath your shoulder and you want really nice posture. You don't wanna be sagging through the shoulder. And then pressing through your feet, you're just gonna hike your hips up in the air. So here in this side bridge or side plank, the entire waistline area, hip, and through my lats and obliques area are engaged. All of these muscles are part of your core. Now by keeping on my shin like this, it makes the exercise a lot easier. Now when I go to the other side, I'll show you a harder variation, um, but just remember, you choose what works for you. Now when I first teach people planks and side planks, what I suggest they do is maybe 15 seconds, 10 seconds, because it's challenging. So here again would be the short lever modified version Again, working the whole lower sac section here of your waistline. Or you can stack your feet or stagger your feet and you can hike up into a straight bridge here. Much more challenging. But I'm using the entire lower portion of my body to push my body up and hence I'm engaging all of my core, okay? So lastly, before I stand up, a traditional plank where you're on your elbows um, face down is a wonderful core strengthener. Remember that the main purpose of our abdominals is to hold our spine still. You can do 80,000 crunches, but a crunch is not about holding the spine still. A crunch is about moving the spine. And for balance, it's the opposite, okay? So bridge. As I showed you, side plank, bird dog, and now forearm planks here. So traditionally, we might do a forearm plank here, okay? I'm pushing my elbows into the floor, my head is in neutral, my abdomen is really engaged. I'm not sagging, but I'm not lifting, I hope. I can't even see myself, but I'm hoping I'm in good position. But that's pretty challenging. So what could you do if you weren't up to that? Well, you could shorten it by putting your knees down. So here, I'm gonna get into the same position. 
almost like I'm gonna get up on my knees, right? Or on my feet. Here's the full version. If I just drop my knees down here, this is a really nice exercise. You're gonna get a lot of good core stability through that. So you might wanna do three sets of all of this. Remember, these are great for your back. So if you're the kind of person who occasionally tweaks your back, as long as your physician says it's okay, these will really help your back. All right, so let's talk about some standing uh, pieces of the picture. So when we stand, we now have our feet into the ground, obviously. Um, the feet give feedback to the rest of the body. So if I'm standing on one foot, and I stand on a rock that shifts me off to one side, it's gonna send signals to my body to pull myself back. So that connection from foot up through your whole body is very, very important. This is why we want you to mainly practice your balance without your shoes on. Um, today I'm gonna have my minimalist shoes, so um, these should be okay for this. So, some of you may know your balance stinks. Some of you may wonder how your balance compares to other people. I think the first test should always be, if you are skipping that step on the ground, is how is your balance? So practice it. Get on one foot, okay? And just lift one foot and see how you do. All right, some of you might be all over the place. If when you try to balance, it's really a challenge, hold on to something. Later, I might hold on to the chair to demonstrate some exercises to you guys. So one way we know the hips are weak is if you can't balance very well. And by the hips, I mean the same hip abductors that we worked when I was lying on the ground. If when you stand up, your whole hip shifts out this way, this hip drops, okay, that's called Trendelenburg, but that means that this hip is very weak. So as I try to engage this muscle, it can't hold, so it pops out to the side. Everything pops out. So when you're balancing, look in a mirror and look at yourself, okay? So good balance. If you can stand 20 seconds without wobbling, that's fabulous. If you can stand 20 seconds with your eyes closed without wobbling, that's even better. But don't feel like you have to go there. So often people ask me about some of the tools that you may see at your gym or at your physical therapist. Um, this disc is a balanced disc. Um, I sometimes use these, but what I find is it's almost not a realistic situation to use this disc. It's, it's mushy, you stand on it, you're all over the place, um, and that's probably not what you do day to day in the parking lot at Stop and Shop. Uh, another tool that we use is these half foam rollers. So um, you can get, and I again would assist yourself, get on it, okay? There's different angles. You can have the forward or back angle, or you could put it sideways, depending on what you think you might need to work on. If you go to physical therapy, you might be asked to balance on one of these. Now here's an important tip for you. Whether you use a disc, whether you use a half foam roller, or whether you use something like a BOSU ball, I'm sure you've heard of them, it's like a half a bubble, you don't really wanna put both feet on it because there's rarely a situation where both of your feet are attached together on the same um, surface and you're both moving at the same time. Most of the time our balance is ruined by single foot stance, by being on one leg. So, you know, if you were a wakeboarder, a surf, you know, a surfer, a skier, uh, a mogul skier, you might want to go ahead and work out with the BOSU ball. But for the average person, a lot of these tools, all you need is something very simple. So, um, by the way, just as an aside, because people seem to want to do this, don't ever, st ever stand on a physio ball. Don't ever kneel on a physio ball. It's a, it's a circus trick. You're going to fall and you're going to hurt yourself. So be very careful when you're doing these balance activities. You may need to hold on to a chair. So in the standing position, one of the first things you might want to do is just assess, do I have one side that's better than the other? Does my foot roll out all the time or does it roll in? 
my foot rolls out. So when I twist my ankle, it's out. Okay, some of you may twist your ankle in. Either way, find out what your propensity is and then work against it. So if I roll out on my foot all the time, I'm gonna try to keep my big toe down. That's gonna keep my foot in neutral. If I roll in all the time, I'm gonna try to engage my hip muscles to keep some weight on the outside of my foot. So a couple drills for standing balance. One of them is just to practice slowly changing side to side this yoga pose, knee to chest. You get a lot of bang from your buck with this. First, you don't have to stay here a long time. Secondly, you're stretching your hip flexor and your glute, which is great for balance anyway. And you can kind of get into the rhythm of switching side to side and holding that knee, okay? So that's a great little drill. Um, a more advanced drill is something called a bowler squat. So I'm going to show you a side version and just bring myself something to aim for because it's always nice when you're balancing to have something to focus on. So here, I'm going to stand on one leg. The other leg is just gently lifted here and I'm going to reach out towards the chair or reach out towards the table or reach out towards the bench. So nice tall body, good posture, whatever leg is up, you're going to reach. Notice when I reach, I'm bending the hip, the knee and the ankle, all of them. Okay. Locking the leg and balancing is fine for yoga, but locking your knee all day to try to get good balance is not good. You're just stacking the bones on top of each other and it makes for lazy muscles. Um, not that you're doing it on purpose, but it makes for lazy muscles. So here, I'm really practicing my balance. And look what else I'm doing. I'm shifting my center of gravity. So I'm shifting my body forward, okay? And because I'm shifting it forward, my glutes, back and core have to adapt to that. Anytime you bend forward, your rear end and your back pulls you back up. So if these are weak and you lose your balance forward, you're not gonna catch yourself. Good balance, you'll find that you often catch yourself before you fall. So, bowler squat, that is a fabulous exercise. Just remember, it's not a stiff leg. Everything is a little bit bent. Another tool that we can use that's more complex is called the star excursion test. And really, it's, it's a great tool for athletes. Um, I practice it a lot at home. It's a challenge. Again, you want to stand on one leg. And the key is the leg you're standing on is very tall and very strong. So here, I'm standing on my right leg. My glute is engaged, my core is engaged. I'm not locking, there's no locking of the knee, okay? But it's through the hip. And then using the other leg, I'm gonna work to touch as far forward as I can, as far side as I can, across my body, and then if you have room, behind. So again, I'm forward, side, and I'm trying to go as far as I can. I have actually lost quite a bit of balance. So you have to work at it. What this is also fabulous for is your knees. So I'm training this hip to keep me stable in all of these positions where the other leg is moving. Okay? Forward, sideways, across, or back. Now an adaptation that's even more advanced is you could take the bowler squat, which I already showed you, and you could work towards touching the floor, touching the side, crossing over the other side. You want a challenge? That'll do it. And if you're an athlete, if you're a baseball player, if you're a softball player, if you're a lacrosse player, and you are picking things up off the ground, what a great, what a great tool, what a great practice for your sports. 
So as I mentioned, balance is a lot about the hips. So here's another drill that you can do to work on your hips. This is called a Haydn after Eric Haydn, who was the famous skater in the Olympics. And this is a much more advanced level uh, exercise. In, in the Haydn, we're really looking at producing power and then having the hip catch the body and decelerate. So the glutes and the hips slow down movement, um, especially laterally, and if you're an athlete, you're always moving laterally, unless you're a cross-country runner and then you, you know, you're just going straight. But runners tend to have very weak lateral hips. So if you're a runner and you have back pain or hip pain or knee pain, you might consider that you're weak laterally and that's manifesting itself in your running. So in a Haydn, we're going to hop and stick it. And this is a very, very conservative. Obviously, I'm here in the studio. I'm not taking a big step out. But you really want to hop and stick it. I'm sticking the landing, OK? I'm coming. I'm decelerating. I'm absorbing force with my knee, my hip, and my ankle. So that's a much more advanced balancing tool. So we've talked a little bit about the core and how important the core is for helping your balance. And I showed you some exercises on the floor that are very, very basic exercises. We then came up and I showed you um, some standing exercises that vary in difficulty from literally just practicing balancing to a gentle leg switch, okay, just shifting weight right to left. I showed you a couple reaching exercises, the bowler squat and also the excursion test where you step your foot way out. So those are tools for kind of more advanced. And then we also did um, the Haydn. So oftentimes, um, your balance is related to weak muscles. So what I have found, aside from some of these little tools that are fun to practice, what I have found is that the stronger you are, the better your balance is going to be. All right? So keep the strength training up, your glutes, your core. And I want you to think about your posture. If there's one thing before we close the show that I think is very important for you to realize is how your posture impacts your balance. So I'm going to go to the side. Let's say I sit at a desk all day and gravity and tightness pulls my body forward. My head is now forward of where it should be. So this is going to drag my whole body forward. So if you think that this kind of posture isn't a big deal, it absolutely is. Number one, it changes your center of gravity. My center of gravity is here in my abdominal area. Once my head comes forward and I lean forward, my center of gravity is changed. In addition, you're going to put strain through the back muscles. So not only now has your center of gravity changed, everything in the back of your body is under strain. You're pitched forward, and now the muscles in the front of your body have gotten very tight. All of that is kind of a, a disaster when it comes to balance. So um, I think that strength is a huge piece, and I don't care whether you're 80, 60, 40, or 20, you should be working on your strength. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention to you is that it's always important to ask your physician about any new exercises that you incorporate. It's possible that some of the things I showed today um, might not be right for you or you might not be ready to execute it, so ask your physician. But these are the kind of exercises that you can do every day. They're not going to get you sore. They're not going to get you tired. But boy, are they going to help your balance. And lastly, remember that if you have any questions or you have any suggestions for the show, you can email me. Um, my business name is Personal Best Personal Training, so my email is kathy at personalbestpersonaltraining.com, and I'd, I'd love to answer any of your questions or entertain any ideas for a new show. So get stronger, get your core stronger, 
practice your standing balance and improve your posture. And if you do these little things I showed you today, you're definitely gonna be balancing much better, much sooner. So I look forward to seeing you again. This is Kathy Ekdahl, certified personal trainer, strength and conditioning coach uh, for the Fitness Forum. Thank you very much.